Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Mixed Mowers and today's episode we're going to take a little look at this DPC 6400 disc cutter, uh, Makita disc cutter. Um, it came as part of a job lot, I had four mowers and a disc saw. Uh, originally my mate Taff, he had this saw um, and he asked um, me to find him a gasket diaphragm set which I did. His boy uh, tried to repair it as a non-runner, it was his own saw. His boys had a go at it um, but um, since he's had a go at it, it's, it's, it's a non-starter. I have had it fire um, just on the old carb spray, so I know the engine is good, um, but he, he chucked it in as part of the job lot deal. So super happy he's done that for me, and hopefully we can get this one up and running. I've done one before. There should be a video up in the top right-hand corner right now. I think there's a two-part video. I've done one before. Slightly different model, I think, uh, but they're all pretty much the samey samey. So without further ado, let's get down dirty and let's check out this Makita disc cutter. Right, and here it is, little Makita. Um, I have all of some bits of this, all of some spare filters, a carburetor kit, new fuel line. Um, and that's about it, I think. So I had a look, have had a little look at it. Um, and these don't generally run very well if they don't have the correct filters in them anyway. Um, that's that's the standard. As you can see, zero filters. There should be a filter at the top here. There's one filter there, which is cool, uh, but well used. So we'll take, we'll take that out, that's no good. There should be a screen there as well to stop any dust going into, into the carburetor. Um, in fact, let me show you the spares I've got for it. I think I've got the entire lot for around about 15, 20 quid. So I've got proper NGK spark plug for it. That is the um, 6726 spark plug. New fuel line, new screen filter, new air filter, new air filter. And a carburetor kit and a carburetor kit for these part number from uh garden hire spares is part number two five five two and that's for a walbro k10 j uh, wj um spark plug uh, a carburetor now a word of warning when off when working on one of these they are notoriously fiddly okay so if you're going to do one have the patience okay because i'm telling you they are fiddly and the size of my ends um, they do take a little bit of work, okay, but they're all perfectly doable um, You just got to uh, take your time with it And just be prepared to sort of you know go and have a cup of coffee and come back because uh, they do test your patience That I do know um, So we'll have a little look at it See what we can't find As I say it's a non-running saw and it came to me uh, as part of a job lot. I didn't pay a, lot, a great deal of money for the um, for the job lot. Um, I think I've got four mowers and a disc cutter, which is good. So four screws removes that. Take the uh, add off. So now we know the machine can't fire, not that it is anyway. First tool you're gonna want is a screwdriver and that goes inside here and there's a little tiny clasp that holds the um, this little um, breather pipe on. So things are filling, come down on the old stall with touch. It's a little, little filling. So undo that one first. And pretty much loosen that right away off, but don't do it all the way because you'll drop the nut and you'll never find that. Now on these, the um the fuel lines is the most important thing on this. There's one fuel line that comes up through uh, the tank, okay, now you, you sit the fuel line in first and then the carburetor then sits on top of the fuel line Don't connect it to the carburetor first because when you push it down you will pinch the fuel line and uh, then, then it won't work, okay, I'm just going to put my lift table up a touch I've had to do a repair on my lift table, it wasn't working um, Something happened to it um, The grub screw had come a bit loose and um, a bit of a bit of a, a service on your lift table it's done a lot of work and since i've had it i've not even serviced it myself so um let's just bring you guys up a smidge too there you go so with that now removed we get a long long handle screwdriver in preferably a flathead and just remove this little rubber boot and uh, assembly that can all come off I'll try and remove the metal assembly first if i can 
They are notorious for being a bit of a pig. So I can see there's no fuel line on the return going to a piston. So I have to put a new a new fuel line on there. That should be there, it's not there, I was perished one or the other. So drop that off like so. Okay, once that boots off, you can then there's two little tiny tabs here on one on each side, one here, one on the other side, push them in. And that'll then help to lift this assembly up. Fuel line, fuel is leaking out of this machine everywhere. Let me just unpressurize a tank. That'll help. And then we can start to lift this stuff out. You will push it out the throttle linkage out the front, that lifts above the throttle linkage. Maybe get a screwdriver in there or something just to push that force up forward. So it comes off of the throttle linkage itself. Yeah, that's not disconnected. And it will start to slowly lift. Like so. A bit more. There we are, a bit of a pickle. You've got to have little fingers. So that now lifts up. And then you'll have a fuel line on the back of this and that fuel line is the one that's perished and that goes to a cylinder to repair long nose snips you can get them behind this is like the fuel line that goes underneath the carburetor okay so gently remove that without uh, doing too much damage that's now removed i should be put a new fuel line on there i'll show you shortly you've got a few bits of uh, wires to remove off of the old stop start Uh, one there at the top, and then you can remove this one completely off. And there's a linkage there, it's got to come off as well. Uh, I might best take it off of there actually. Off of there, like so. Okay, so now I've just put a fuel line onto here, if it goes into the cylinder, it comes round. That sits into there, and then that will then sit on the bottom of this carburetor just here. That's where that one sits, okay? Um, the fuel line was not actually um, in, its, in its grommet. It was pinched over, like so. And that's part of the reason why this fuel line uh, doesn't, wasn't working, okay? I've ordered a new one, uh, but do you know what? That actually looks quite good. But it was pinched over, so what he'd done is I think he connected it up to the carburetor which is what most people do is common mistake. That goes on there like so. And then they then push it down. That's incorrect. What you do is that fuel line has to sit into its housing first, like so. Once it's in its housing, the carburetor then sits on top of it. Okay, that's the first mistake um, the young lad made. But hey ho, good on him for trying. Bit of a clean up in here because there's lots of dirt and grime and what have you. Get rid of some of this excess fuel, okay. And you can see just by some of the evidence having why, why we had to have filters on these machines, okay? Because uh, this is where it all collects. I mean, as I say, they don't run right if you don't um, if you don't have filters on them. Okay, so here's the carburetor itself. Make sure you keep all the bits and pieces. They're very, very simple to remove. Literally just two screws here, one here and one here, and that then removes, you can then take the carburetor out of its housing, which is very simply done with a, Torx bit. Now I'm only going in here because he asked uh, me to get him a gasket diaphragm set so I'm just curious as to uh, if he's set the carburetor up right. So we can now remove that linkage there, that can come off to get out of the way. That other little linkage, that can come off. We can then retract the bolt, retract that bolt, and that carburetor should just come straight out. And there's our carburetor. Just make a note to yourself that the carburetor, um, the pipes are on the bottom, not on the top, okay? Right, we'll go over the bench, split this carburetor in half, see what we can't find. Right, so let's start to undo this carburetor, see all what uh, delights we have inside. I think the carburetor has been, been cleaned, but I don't think it's been installed right, maybe. We'll have a look. Okay. Let's take that off. 
Okay, so we've got the reed. And we've got the, uh, the gasket there. That all looks fine to me. So I'm quite happy with that. I'm going to leave that be. There's no need to upset anything if it all looks fine. And the club that looks clean in there. I'm happy with that one. And that's, got, that's definitely got a new reed inside there. So we'll pinch that back down shut just for now. Some people get a bit confused with carburetors. So sometimes it's best to take one part apart and then when you're happy with it, just put it back together in the order it came. So that way you don't sort of lose track of where you were. Yep. So happy in there, cross method to do it up. And let's now attack this side, the diaphragm side. I uh, want a little tiny flat headed driver to open this one up. That wasn't particularly tight. A bit of rust in there. Now on these, the diaphragm itself um has a little keeper and i'll show you what i mean um it, it keeps to the back of the needle arm and uh, before i take this all off i'll double check it is actually on the needle itself i'll show you what i mean once i get it off okay all right so first one noticing there's no gasket on here see no gasket and then let's see if he's hooked it up to where it should be. That's why I'm going to move this without too much drama. No, he hasn't. Okay. So this is a very common fault with, not fault, but problem with these. On this diaphragm is a little tiny um, dimple, just so you see it on the top. Now that dimple sits inside that little tiny groove. And I think it's just pushed on top it came out with relative ease so that needs to go into there so you can't physically drop take it off see that it's stuck and i think he had it on top okay so that's one and no gasket so that cut that diaphragm there's no way it's going to be able to flex the way it should do with no gasket spacer on there so fortunately for me i have got a spare a spare one so here's a brand new kit now this kit was probably about Four or five quid, it wasn't a lot of money. We've got a diaphragm. There's a gasket we want. Definitely want a gasket and we want a diaphragm. All the other bits I'm going to keep to one side uh, for future projects. No point in using them if you don't need them. I might just slide that back up so I don't lose any of the bits in there. Put it over that side. That's it. I can slide that back up at a later date. Right. So, a bit of a clean up required, just to get rid of some of these um, edges of this old gasket, so it won't seat properly. And then we're going to put the, uh, the new diaphragm on, and then we're going to fit this back together. So I'm going to give it a standing blade just to tie this edge up when I come back. Okay, a bit of a clean, and that, that needle is actually working. You can see it is just lifting it up as it should do, so that's fine. This carburetor is really clean. Really, really clean. So really happy with it. And this diaphragm, this gasket will only go on one way. There's a little tiny locator for it, which goes on just like so. Okay, and that sits on there. Well, there's actually two. Bigger pardon. Talking like an absolute fool. Maybe that's why he didn't fit it. See that there? There's another hole there, see? And that goes on. And that gasket, that diaphragm, is missing a hole. See how it's different? I know it's not. I'm talking like an absolute fool. There you go. It goes on there like that. No, that's right. It doesn't fit. It's not quite the right gasket and diaphragm set for this. That goes on there. See that? Not quite right, is it? Not quite right. But we can make that fit. Let's have a look at the old one, see how that compares. Exactly the same. So there has been a differential, differential in this gasket set. So that's going to go on there. And then I'm going to mark that. Do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to cut. I'm going to cut that piece off of there. 
so it actually sits on there as it should do. That should sit like so. So I'm going to cut this piece off. I'm going to cut a little tiny nick just in there so that, that, so that this sits down. It doesn't quite sit down flush where it should do. See that? Let me get that done and I'll come back. Okay, this is slightly different to the degree. They may have even sent me the wrong gasket set. But what I can do is I can modify it. Because we've got the right tools, we can muck about with it. So I'm going to put a new hole just about there on this gasket. That's not far out. And we want to put another hole just to one side of this. Now these only have screw holes, okay? So it's not life or death. Would help if I had it around the right way. As long as it actually seals around, and we should be winning. That one's okay. That one's a bit more. Let's be about there. I'll get as close as I can. Without, without damaging it. So we're, we're making do here. Like that go. Um, I might just take a lip into there as well. Took a little while to get this gasket set, so right, that's it. I'm happy with that. So that now that gasket will now sit on there, okay, and uh, we can now fit the um, the diaphragm on. I dare say the diaphragm will have the same problem, which I'll have to overcome. Let's have a look at the two. This is the old. This is the new. Yeah, it's missing one of the holes. So what I could do is just punch another hole in here, or use the old diaphragm. I'm going to use the old diaphragm because this one shouldn't be that old because he asked for a new diaphragm set, so we should be all right. So let me try and fish that all on and hook it underneath that, that arm. Remember what I said about that little arm? It's got to go underneath it. Once it's underneath it, you know you've got it because then you won't be able to pull it up like that. That's caught. So happy with that. Yeah, happy with that. Let's find the uh, the end piece to it. Which is there. That's all now on. And in where it belongs. So it's a bit, a little bit of a bodge fix. So I, know, I know I've been told off for calling it bodges. People don't say I bodge, but I just find a workaround. I suppose that's, that's what I try and do. Make it work, eh? Okay? So let's try and fish that one into there. That's going in. So I now have a spare diaphragm, but that's not for um, the saw that I need. So I may get hold of uh, Garden Hire Spares and put that code into them and see what that comes off of. <coughs> we'll see if it runs. If it runs, I'm all good. This is going to my spare gasket and diaphragms tray, you know, or bits and pieces. Oh, hello. Come on, baby, light my fire. There you go. Let's go. So now it's got a gasket on there. It's now got the right gap over a diaphragm. It hasn't got the gap over a diaphragm. That diaphragm's never going to flex like it should. Come on, baby, light the old fire. All right, screw that one down. Screw that one. That one. That one. Right. 80% happy of that. We'll see if it works though. That's the main thing. Um, that's a carburetor now rebuilt. <clears throat> and we'll go back over to the machine and we'll, uh, we'll have a fit of the old machine. I have also got somewhere a fuel filter for this. I'm not quite sure if it's got a fuel filter on it. So I've got a new one of those as well, which came with the kit as well. So spinning around, back in two ticks. Okie dokie. We're back in the room. <clears throat> Get a set of forceps. So now I'll we'll try and fish out this fuel line, which would be no easy thing. 
They are notorious for being a bit of a pickle. Take that out. And I'll try and get hold of the fuel line, wherever it may be. I say these are notorious for trying to get these out. And I might use my hook rather than me. Uh, I've got a hook, which I use. Let me grab my hook. The hook works better. Uh, just a bit of fence and wire. That's all it is. Open it up a touch. And then you can then sneak it in there and have a little fish about. And generally, you can pick it up. It's going about there somewhere. Hook may be too big. No, I've got it. First time. Let's bring that up and let's get a set of forceps on it just so I've got it. And then we can muck about with it. Right, I've got it there. <coughs> let's remove the old clip. The old fish and hook. Grab another set of forceps. And just start to work like that. <coughs> there it goes. Okay, fuel line looks good. It's not perished. So we're going to remove that old fuel filter. That can come off. Let's throw that in the old bin. New one. That goes in. Happy with that. A uh, quick tip: if you leave the fuel tank done up whilst um, whilst your carburetor a lot is off, it will self pressurize and fuel will start to come up. So leave the fuel cap loose. Okay. So new fuel filter on there. Happy with that. Let's do it up, then just back it off. <coughs> so that's that. Let's get a bit more wire. Um, so a bit of a clean up here. whilst we're inside. I want you guys to see as much as you can. Okay, so now what we can do is now fit the carburetor back to um, its housing and it goes on uh, fuel side, uh, fuel pipes up. It goes on that way like so. Me thinks. That looks about right. Yep. Yeah. And the big bolts. They go through. They only go through one way. There's only two of them, so I might have gone the wrong way. We'll see. Let's have a little look. Uh, holes high, hole. That is right. And it goes on. And there should be. It doesn't go all the way up, I don't think. It comes over slightly. That's it about there. That one in there. And that one in there. And do that up. And that way the carburetor is then in its right position. Nick them up. I need to pay more attention to what I'm doing with my camera because I keep doing stuff off, off screen and I'm getting used to this. As I said before, I might have to change my settings to bring it a bit further out. Look, I like it nice and close because you're going to see what's going on, you know. Okay. I can now bring this round and hook up that little tiny uh, stop switch. Goes on to there. That's on. This cable sits up into here. That's where that lives. Okay, sit him in place. Um, Fuel cable on the bottom of the carburetor. That's now on and sit that. That has its own place to sit as well. And you'll get that as you uh, sit this carburetor into position. Throttle linkage out. Boot goes down. Right, cable in place one, which is fiddly, and fuel line in place two, which is fiddly. I can't show you if it's right in the depths. Okay. So now that's nearly in place, we can now start to bring this down. Frock cable's in position. Right, and then all you have to do then is literally push down um, this top into position, okay, and make sure that the carburetor inlet, the fuel inlet, meets that hose down in there, okay? I can't, I can't tell you how imperative that is. 
Um, obviously, your machine is not going to start if you don't get it in there, but concentrate on putting the carburetor to the hose, not the hose to the carburetor, okay? That's the best thing. Your lead should now be in place. Just now got to fit this little tiny um, uh, bracket, which will go over the hose. Uh, let's get that right way first, screw to, screw to my left. Let's get that on. Right, so doing that up. It's all good. That's done. I'm going to try and. I might just release that little clip that's been held to and just give that a bit of a twist round just so it changes the, the, the rotation of that cable. Like so. That's better. I'm happy with that. Okay. Right. That just tucks down out of the way. I might put a little cable tie on it just to hold it close to there somewhere. Okay. Right, that's that one. Um, so now we can get some spare parts, which we need. We've got a filter, we've got a screen to put on. Screen goes on there. Like so, the wrong way around. Then we've got a filter. That sits on there. Okay. Right, well, let's grab a spark plug. That can go in next. Once we're here. I've got an NGK in it. NGK BPMRA7. Uh, I've got a 6A in here. It says it's the right one though, this one. Old book set. Don't nick him down. To that. Put the old filter back on. Now, good thing is you can now sell this as, you know, darn near serviced. All apart from the belt. That goes on. Might bring a little tiny cable tie up to that. Just so it stops that cable floating about. To stop any chattering going on, you know. Just holds it together, keeps it away from that cylinder. That can now sit all in there, get a bit of a pinch. We'll go. Come on, baby. That's it. Well, that's when I'm starting to sit. I'm going to do that up. So, hopefully, it's a run because it should sell for quite good money. The old builders love them, don't they? Especially a nice, cheap, mid cheap Makita saw. Maybe all over it. But no one loves a Makita saw, you see, or this saw. Out the van, straight flat out, do the job, throw it back in the van, hope it starts tomorrow. You know? I just done my fuel cap up because uh, it can now start to pressurize itself. They do uh, require pur pulling through the pork wall anyway, but that should encourage some of the fuel up. Okay, uh, one more filter to go. Is this little puppy? Uh, should be a corner cut off there. Is there white side up? So a new filter goes in. Brand spanking. That goes on. That does that. And we're there. So let me put some tools away. Um, there is petrol in it. Put some tools away, take it outside, and we'll uh, see how it fires. 
I should bring an electronic screwdriver with me because it may need a bit of a tune um, because uh, it has got a new dot, a new uh, carburetor kit to a certain degree on it. So give us two ticks, a bit of a tidy up, and I'll come back. Right, here's the old disc cutter. I haven't done nothing to it. I put no petrol in it. It's already petrol in there. Done nothing to it. I haven't tried to fire it or nothing. So let's see how we get on. a bit of adjustment just on the low side of the car but we'll do it right now right i'm gonna fire the saw up and give it a bit of adjustment the holes are just on the back side of the saw just here so we'll see how it goes got to try and keep it running as long as i can and try and pick the idle up So that's that little Makita disc saw, um, now all up and running. A bit of a tune um, on the old carburetor because we have put in a new gasket in there as well. So that's why I need a bit of a tune. And also the young lad may have been in there had a bit of a fiddle. So that's now running right, idling right, topping out, absolutely beautiful. I'm gonna put a disc on it as well, run it with a disc and maybe fine tune it from there, but shouldn't really need to. If this is the first time you're watching Mixed Mouse, hit the old subscribe button, whack your bell, set your notifications to all. That way, about the two, one, I've done a video or two, I'm on my Saturday night weekly live stream, which starts at 6 p.m. UK time. If you enjoyed this video, give it a big thumbs up. It helps cause the growth of my channel. And don't forget any comments you've got, stick them down below in your comment section. I look forward to seeing the next episode of Mixed Mars very, very soon. But until then, people, don't forget, more importantly, take her easy.